So everybody, as you can see, it's Nick, a very pink Nick. So more of reclaiming myself. So I, um, I did go to my swimming club on Sunday and it was really, really hard, but I went. And this morning, um, each Wednesday, I'm setting myself a target of just doing a swim. It's a public swimming session, but it's lamed and it's really quite quiet. So I just took myself in on my own just to try and build up some stamina. You can see from the color of me that it's still hard. So it's like four sessions, but one of, well, there was a few things that I noted about today that helped. One is um, I do struggle coming round and kind of getting with it in the morning. That is the one, that is actually the only downside I would say about the antidepressants is I'm very, very woozy in the morning. It takes me a while to get myself together. And that was creating some anxiety in me because I wanted to do the 8.30 lane session so that it didn't cut into my day too much. Um, and so what I did was I actually woke up at 5.30, but I didn't get up. I just woke up at 5.30 um, and I did put um, soft lighting on and I actually put Radio 4 on quietly in the background, but I just allowed myself to lay in bed for a bit and come round. Then I made myself a cup of tea and then, um, you know, I had some breakfast and whatever, but I did everything really slowly this morning, really slowly. So by the time it came to leave at like whatever time it was, 10 to 8, I felt I felt really relaxed about it and I felt like I was into the day and I'd come around. So, and the reason that came to me was I did, um, I did do my yoga on Monday with um, my very lovely yoga teacher. And one of the things she observed about me is the tendency to rush. And she really worked with me on Monday um, in terms of slowing everything down. And actually she said, you know, we, we live under this false solution that we think if we're rushing and we're doing everything fast, then sorry, I've just turned on the sunlight, it's hit me. You can see I'm like a beacon. <laughs> um, this tendency we have to rush everything and that very often the, the real work is done when we really slow things down. So Monday's session, my yoga session was very much about slowing everything down, really slowing the breathing down, really slowing the movement down and being really, really conscious. And that stuck with me, you know, this morning. So I, I did get in the car and I did drive to the pool and I had no expectations. On, I didn't put any pressure on myself at all. And I got to the pool and there's different lanes. Um, there's a fast lane, the medium lane, the slow lane. And I purposely got in the medium lane. Um, I would normally get in the fast lane. Um, but I thought, you know what? I don't want to be the fastest. I don't want to be keeping up with anybody. Um, the only person I'm here for is me. So I got in the medium lane and, um, and I slowed it down. And rather than trying to swim like I used to, I just really slowed it down and focused on my technique and my stroke. And I'm not saying it wasn't hard, of course it's hard, look at me. But this morning I managed um, 50 lengths, which to other master swimmers won't sound a lot, but to everyday <laughs> Joe Blogs people like me, and that's pretty much a marathon after not really swimming very much for four years. And this is my fourth session in the pool. And it, it wasn't easy, but I just kept taking breaks. That was the other thing. I didn't beat myself up, you know, because I didn't do two lengths, I did two and then stopped. And then I could do four and then I stopped. And then if I wanted to do six lengths, I went slower so that I could keep going. And there's something really important in this slowing everything down. And it really stuck in my mind from my yoga lesson. So I guess I'm wanting to share that. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I'm bearing in mind, I hope, I hope, I, I would please, I don't want anyone to watch this and think, oh my goodness, I feel, you know, crap because I can't swim like that. Please, please don't feel like that. There's lots of stuff I can't do. But, you know, I'm from, you know, we, we were swimming from when we were four years old. I'm from a swimming family and your body, you know, I mean, you can see how knackered I am looking at the colour of me, but actually your body does remember stuff. It's like people that have always um, run or done other things. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a terrible runner. You know, I tried running for years. I even ran with a club and I was still shit because I think there's something, when you do something from a very young age, your body has that body memory. So um, it doesn't matter. This is not a comparison. This is not about you doing what Nick does or anything. It's about each of us finding the thing that's us, that's authentically us. And um, swimming has always, it is just a, I think I'm a bit of a water babe. 
and it brings me quite a lot of peace and I like the silence when I'm in water. So I think there's something really important and Gabor Matty talks about, um, if anyone's read his book, The Myth of Normal, it's brilliant. I highly recommend it. I will put the link um, to his website in the comments. I've really found him really, really helpful. He talks a lot about healing in a toxic culture. And he talks about one of the key things is actually allowing ourselves to be authentically who we are. But the problem is very few of us actually know who we are at a very deep, authentic level because we've spent so much time in a world trying to fit in and not, not really knowing. And he said the best way to start the process of finding your authentic self is to observe when you're not your authentic self. And you'll know that because you will feel in conflict, you will feel agitation, you will feel frustration, you will feel resentment. And when those feelings come up, he talks about observing the triggers and the situation and then asking that compassionate curiosity is what he talks about asking the question of yourself of, you know, why is it and sitting with it? Why am I feeling like that? And, um, and I think we all know if we're honest with ourselves, if we think about the times where we, you know, our heart feels real free joy, genuine joy. And one of mine is when I'm in, you know, water. And I think back to some of the days I went back to, I had a very, very long gap from swimming while I was having children. In actual fact, for a 10 year period, whilst I had kids, I, you know, I didn't play squash. I, did, I mean, I, I don't think I put makeup on for 10 years. You know, it was, it was, it was hardcore with three kids under five and my husband was working away to keep the show on the road financially. So, Hey ho, but, um, and I can think back to the mornings, um, I used to drop the kids at school and preschool, wherever it was they were going, and I would do a swimming session. And because it was mid morning, it was always really, really quiet in the lane sessions. And I remember this morning and I was the only person left in the pool um, and I was doing my lengths and it was a beautiful summer's day outside and the sunlight was streaming through the window and it was reflecting off the water. And I was just, um, I just can't tell you the peace I felt just gliding through the water with that sunlight coming through the window onto the water in this pool all to myself. So the, you know, the water was really still because there weren't other swimmers next to me. So it was really, really tranquil. And, and, um, and that brought me real peace deep in my soul, really. So I think, I think we all know if we allow ourselves to sit in the stillness and just think about the times when we felt that sense of comfort and peace. And there's something really important, I think, particularly during our menopausal transition, of really searching, you know, searching for that, who we are at a deep, authentic level. It's a little bit like the story about, um, I can't remember all the ins and outs with the brain fog, but, you know, people manically searching for this diamond only for somebody to put their hand in the pocket and to find that it was there all the time. And I think that might apply to us as as individuals so this was meant to be a vlog about saying um this is how i managed to get myself in the pool this morning and i do feel a bit um wary and cream crackers so i have got a um, couple of hours before i start the next part of my day which is another thing i'm doing is not rushing from one thing to another i'm really being really disciplined again slowing it down leaving time in between things if you can um but actually, I think there's something that obviously I'm just meant to share, which is about this, the Gabor Massey, what he talks about. Do any of us really know who we are at a deep, authentic level? And that is actually the most important thing I think each of us can try and focus on. And seeing as the menopause is kind of feels like to me, kind of smashes whatever I thought I was into pieces anyway, in terms of how we pick the pieces up and put ourselves back together, well, isn't it better to do so at a deep, authentic level? Anyway, I hope that helps. Lots of love. Take care. Bye.